Hello there and thank you for joining me on this week's edition of Business Tuesday. You are just right in time to catch your favorite business news segment. And remember today is the 4th of September, the year 2018. My name is Edi Nyadwa and welcome to the program. Chinese President Xi Jinping has pledged to provide a 60 billion US dollar financing for African nations to help in infrastructure development as he opened a summit with African leaders in Beijing. The financing will also include a 15 billion US dollar in grants and interest free loans to its uh, growing concerns that China's assistance to developing nations is mirroring in debt. President Xi Jinping also dispelled reports that China invests in vanity projects in Africa. Currently, China is the single largest bilateral financier of infrastructure in Africa. But critics warn that African nations have been going into unsustainable levels of debt with the Asian giant. South Africa's President Cyril Ramaphosa welcomed China's growing involvement on the continent saying he did not agree that a new colonialism is taking hold in Africa. China will also set up a peace and security fund and will continue to provide free military assistance to the African Union. China's actions have demonstrated that a stronger Africa is seen as an opportunity to invest in rather than as a problem or a threat. And China has continued to lead the way in showing what is lost in not engaging and partnering with Africa. The relationship that we have forged through FOCAC is premised on the fundamental and inalienable right of the African people to determine their own future. It is premised on the African Union's Agenda 2063, a vision that has been crafted in Africa and crafted by Africans themselves. It is a vision of an integrated, prosperous and peaceful Africa, driven by its own citizens and representing a dynamic force in the international arena. It is a vision of a continent where commerce, trade, investment, skills and knowledge move freely across the borders that were imposed on us by our colonial rulers. We are working to build an Africa that is defined by good governance, democracy, respect for human rights. After the Kenyan government effected a 16% VAT tax on petroleum products, a group of governors from the central Kenya are now calling on President Uhuru Kenyatta to ensure that the tax does not take effect. They now want President Kenyatta to sign into law the Amended Finance Act 2018 that pushed the taxes to till the year 2020. And we, and we think this will adversely affect our people. It will affect our people down to the grassroots. Uh, our incomes are very low in the county. So we have had cries from our people, uh, pleading that we possibly 
uh, plead with the national government um, and with the, His Excellency the President, Uhuru Kenyatta, that when he comes back, he reviews uh, you know, that, that, that tax is too high for our people and it will affect our people very, very fundamentally uh, in terms of their welfare. Uh, and we would like that that tax definitely be reduced. This particular policy is going to be very restrictive even for economic growth generally. It's not just going to increase the cost of living, but what it will do, it will also hinder economic growth, meaning we will be stuck in this cycle of, of never um, improving and getting out of poverty. So they need to go back to the drawing board, look at their fiscal um, policy, look at the monetary policy the Treasury has, and then come up with another alternative. Because in, um, in economics, there's always an alternative. They have, they have adapted a system that is going to rob the, now the poor and give the rich, apparently, because this affects everybody who uses fuel in this country. And that, that particularly means that the tax is going to find its way all the way to anything that is transport. Why don't we tighten the nuts on revenue collection and pin down the vision that is largely there to those who are paying taxes? And it is possible to bridge that gap of the 70 billion only, rather than just going to look for Mamamboga, the border borders, because that will be taken away from the poor and giving to the rich, which is not really going to end this vicious cycle of chasing our tail. And now to matters flying is that Railo Dinga is now calling on investors in East African region to utilize the Kisumu International Airport. Odinga says that Kisumu should be the regional hub of East Africa due to its proximity to Entebbe, Mwanza and also Rwanda. This comes after one flight launched its daily flights to Uganda and also Tanzania. This is a, a great thing that has happened to Kisumu. I'm told this is now the sixth airline to come to Kisumu. And it's going to do a daily, daily flight. Twice. Two flights a day. It's fantastic. This means that Kisumu is growing. Kisumu is growing. Kisumu is basically the regional hub here. Because from Kisumu, and Tebe is just across the, 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 the water. Mwanza is just down here. And here, the regional here, Kakamega. I'm here with Honorable Wangwe, the MP for Navaholo. Yes. This is the airport of choice. Okay? So the region here, Musia County, Kakamega, Bungoma, Vihiga, Nandi, Kiricho, Kisi, Nyamira, Migori, Homabay, Kisumu, and Sierra. That is the, the catchment area. And that's why all the flights coming from here are always full. Even if the safari link comes, you can even do three flights. They will be full. Okay? So you're welcome and make it this place your hub. And fly from here. When we are running um, um, the jet link, you started the route to Mwanza. And it was proven to be fairly lucrative. So we're doing Nairobi, Mwanza, uh, uh, Nairobi, Kisumu, Mwanza, and back. You can also do Entebbe. Manza. There are a number of Ugandans who don't have to waste money to go to Nairobi. It's congested. They'll come and buy things here and then take them back to Uganda. As you know that uh, the, um, the SGR is coming to Kisumu. So it's going to be easier for Ugandans to come and do shopping here and take them back either by the lake or by road. 
Mobile service provider Safaricom says that the new communication authority regulation measures are anti-consumer and punitive to the company. One of the remedies proposed by the communication authority is to set a maximum retail charge on phone calls, a move Safaricom is opposed to. The giant telecommunication CEO Bob Colimo says that the industry players should not be innovative in order to spur development. He however admits that indeed Safaricom is dominant. An event. Um, uh, I think the point, one of the points that I made during the um, during the agent book, the, the chairman and I, uh, was to reiterate this issue around dominance. And much has been said about dominance, much has been said about how Safaricom is responding to dominance. Actually, dominance is a matter of fact. If you are more than 50% in a market segment, in the telecommunication sector, you are dominant. And so we've never denied that we're dominant. What the board and the management feel very strongly about is the fact that um, there is an assumption that we are abusing dominance, whereas in fact, if you look at the analysis Mason report, it clearly says that there is no sign that we are abusing dominance. And um, we tend to be a little bit, um, actually a little bit emotional about this, because um, the chairman has been involved in this company for uh, longer than I have, and I've been involved for 12 years. And we've built this company um, together with the six or 700,000 shareholders over the last 18 years from scratch. We've invested, uh, we have listened to our customers, we have responded to those needs, and we have become the, the company that we are today. And we believe that all of the, uh, all of the sentiment which has been expressed by a number of players out there, particularly our, our competitors, um, are not consumer friendly. It actually really addresses the issue of the shareholders of the other competitors. So if you look at things like um, a price control, price control is one of the silliest things you've ever heard because it does not address the issues of the consumer. It does not uh, address the issues of, um, of innovation. It simply takes what we have done gives us the competitors to say, could you match it? And if they can't match it, then it comes back to Safaricom to say, you can't do that. All we can say at this stage is that we are getting listened to. People are listening to the arguments that we are putting forward. Uh, we have a very, very uh, strong uh, team making representations on our behalf. Um, we can't predict uh, what, what the outcomes will be, obviously, uh, but we feel more confident that people are starting to understand that you cannot, uh, you cannot uh, legislate or regulate in a manner that kills uh, the industry. And now we revisit the issue of demolitions that grip the CBD. Uh, where now we find that the National Land Commission has yet again revoked the title deeds for Airgate Mall, formerly Taj Mall. The commission says that the mall sits on government land that was reserved for the expansion of the Outer Ring Road. It now blames land cartels for the confusion of allocation of the land. This will be the third time that the commission has revoked that title. And some media going around saying that the National Land Commission approved for Taj Mahal to remain where it is. And this is contrary to what the National Land Commission did. Uh, the National Land Commission, on the 22nd of January 2016, via Gazette Notice number Roman 118, number 6, page 120, we asked that that title of Taj Mahal be revoked. I'm telling openly to any authority, I'm not going to remove these structures, even they're saying 15th August, not even to my death. I'm not going to remove it myself. And it's up to the road authorities to come and demolish it. Our part is not to go and demolish. We don't have tractors, we don't have bulldozers to pull down buildings. We have grants of that title. We found that it was an amalgamation of two titles, namely LR number 7075 stroke 13 stroke 1. That stroke 13 stroke 1 is part of the road. It's part of the road reserve and it was acquired by national government via the Gazette Notice number 1105 of 30th April 1971. And now to our last story is that 
Edible oils and soap manufacturer Pony Oil has announced plans to expand its regional network by beefing up its local distribution network to serve an increasing dynamic consumer market. Pony Oil Products Commercial Director Mr. Rajul Malde says the Mombasa-based manufacturer is focusing on the, on the sustainability of its value chain. He was speaking during an award ceremony uh, after a successful market campaign that was dubbed Nyakuo Counter Promotion. This afternoon culminates the end of our Nyakua Cantor promotion uh, where all our distributors, 180 distributors, were given an opportunity to win different uh, uh, cadres of uh, vehicles starting from a Bajaj Cute, a uh, small vehicle, to a Pro Box, to a uh, van, to a pickup, to an 8-ton uh, vehicle. And fundamentally the idea was that each distributor was given the opportunity to achieve targets and if they achieved the target set, then they would be qualifying for the uh, necessary price based on the quantity of product they would have bought from us. The idea behind uh, doing this kind of a promotion is to es essentially invest in our distributors and ensure that they add to their fleet capacity so that they are able to distribute our products right down to retail. The objective of uh, distribution right down to retail is that in our understanding 70% of Kenyan consumers still purchase from the traditional kiosks and dukas although a lot of supermarkets have come about in the country and in order for us to reach the over 100,000 kiosks and dukas in the country we need more wheels on the ground so the project really started for us about three years ago when our first Nyakua Kanta promotion was launched and at the time the promotion was uh, slightly differently built where the objective was not just achieving targets but also achieving depth in distribution and we were testing and checking out there in the market for various distributors and over the last three years we have given away a total of 28 vehicles of different capacities including tuk-tuks and bajajis right all, all the way up to 8 and 10 ton vehicles. Over the uh, period of the three years apart from the vehicles that we've given away we've also, also invested in capacity building within our distributors by training, uh, overcoming objections and, and dealing with these kinds of uh, uh, training and uh, adding capacity to sales teams of the distributors so that they are able to sell the range of our products. The range of our products starting from fresh fry and salad in the consumer oil category, fry mate and pishipoa in the cooking fats category, whitewash and whitewash extra recently launched last year in September in the laundry and multi-purpose category and sour soap and diva soap in the toilet and bathing soap categories and diva glycerin in the cosmetics category. So today we've given away nine vehicles uh, amongst the 28 that we've done over the, 20, over the last three years and the nine winners have come from far and wide starting from Kitale to Embu to Nairobi to Karagoya to uh, Machakos and one in Mombasa as well. Uh, so we are very proud to have uh, given away the prizes that we committed to give and we look forward to adding depth to our distribution which has been our objective. Uh, the total value of prizes that we've given away in, in, uh, in this year including the vehicles and other smaller promotions that we've done with uh, smaller wholesalers all over the country will come to close to about 18 million shillings and uh, we by the end of this year uh, we will probably close at about 24 million shillings. Overall, in, in the three months, obviously it increased sales, uh, no doubt, because uh, a lot of the distributors actually stocked up uh, to achieve their targets. But in terms of uh, a longitude of the year, uh, the market share or the volume growth would have been close to about 2 or 3% from, from previous averages. Uh, the space in the uh, laundry, washing, uh, bathing, and medicated uh, category is a very complicated space. There are a lot of players locally and internationally that exist in the Kenyan market and we would like to clean up uh, the, the complications by providing simple choices to the simple Kenyan consumer. So the first one that we expect to launch by the end of uh, September will, uh, in budget purposes, will be uh, approximately 15 uh, million shillings in terms of uh, research and development. And the one that we expect to do just before Christmas, towards the end of the year, will be a much bigger one that will probably uh, gross up to about 35 or 40 million shillings. In terms of our suppliers, uh, obviously not in terms of promotions uh, and uh, 
uh, capacity building, but in terms of quality development, uh, innovation, and building improved packaging materials, recyclable, biodegradable, those kinds of investments we continue. And now on that note, Business Tuesday takes a short break. When I return, I'll be speaking to Mr. David Ngugi, an investment analyst at Cyton Investment, to put into perspective the 16% tax on petroleum products.